If you're already an owner of a Yamaha Tenere 700 or indeed looking to buy one of these amazing bikes, this is going to spike your interest. Hello team, welcome to Rider Guide. I'm Neil, your host for this week's shenanigans. I'm going to take you back to mid 2020 where I rode a Demonstrator T7 out of Yamaha World in Adelaide. Took a, a twisty road up into the hills and uh, then found a little bit of a dirt track, a couple of kilometres long where I could blast back and forth a few times uh, before reluctantly heading down the southeastern freeway back into the city. I was out for about 90 minutes. It wasn't nearly enough because uh, I absolutely wanted to keep that bike. The only disappointment I felt about that ride was having to give it back. So, of course, I ordered one. Uh, October came and so did this. I was like a dog with two dicks, really. A very happy boy. Two years later, it's time to share what I think is some very important ownership experience. Now, despite supply issues out of Yamaha that are now thousands of these bikes out in the world and uh, countless buyers still waiting to get what is their dream bike. There are literally hundreds as well of social network pages in regards to the T7 and a common question I've seen on these sites and pages uh, other than Facebook, there's the forums as well. The question I say nearly all the time is, now I've finally taken delivery of my bike, my T7's arrived, what do I need to add? I have to say I also made a list when I first ordered mine and started splashing my hard-earned cash. Um, here's a list, it wasn't necessarily the right thing to do. So it looks like we had a centre stand, Yamaha Rally bash plate, uh, the Yamaha bash plate toolbox that bolts to it, rad guard, headlight protector, engine guards, RNG spindle sliders, the Garmin Zumo GPS, quad lock mountings, heated grips, uh, heavy duty inner tubes, bark busters, double take adventure mirrors, I've got like an anti wobble bracket for the dash, the Yamaha mono seat luggage rack if you like and managed to remove the rear pegs because there's no rear seat so that's not a bad thing and uh, what else, decent toolkit because the OE1 is hardly even a token gesture, it's crap, being B tail tidy, uh, in of K3 high def front and rear camera setup. Now to be fair, depending on where you're intending to ride, there are some necessary items on that list. If you intend to ride tracks and trails, absolutely you're going to need certain items. The rad guard is a necessity, headlight protection, absolutely, bark busters, of course you'll need a toolkit of some sort. Um, everything else though needs to be sort of risk assessed in relation to your environment, which I'll come to. I'm going to come to these shortly as well, the crash guards. But um, look at, looking at what I've added, I've pretty much carb loaded my T7. We all know what happens when we smash the carbs. We get fat, we become sluggish, we lose our agility, we, all, we, get, we get overloaded and struggle to move along like we used to, I suppose. And that's exactly what this bike feels like to me it's not the bike i bought and definitely not like the agile lithe beastie it once was in, in that demo that i rode um it's sort of like being suggested to me that maybe i'm just starting to explore the limits of the bike a bit um and that my skills are improving and i've come from over three decades of road bikes having previous to that done little to no loose surface work so there's a significant transition yes but i still feel I've restricted my progress by allowing, by allowing all this weight gain on the bike. Um, when I got the bike, I felt like it was an everyday weapon, that even a relative novice off-roader like I was could quickly get the hang of it, but it was also capable of being a decent long-distance adventure ride as well when called upon. Mine now feels like an adventure bike that might make me think twice about tackling certain terrain because it's it's not really feeling, feeling as, as weapon-like as it did. What appealed to me when I bought this was the fact that it wasn't just an adventure bike, it was a radical 
sporty steed, if you like, but I've hidden that sporty feel. I've hidden all the, 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 the athleticism that I felt with the bike with all the add-ons. And I, I desperately miss that Tenere weapon that I bought. And I think to get it back to where it was, it's gonna have to go on a diet. I'm gonna have to sort of reduce the carbs, if you like. I've no idea what it weighs now. It just feels way too much for me. And uh, it's a struggle. Um, I feel that there's potential to slim down 15 kilos, maybe even more, maybe 20. I've got to get to work on it. I'm gonna show you what I've done so far. So what we've done so far, weight-wise, to start shaving off some of this carbs, as I'll call it, uh, started with the anti-gravity battery, which is under the seat. That saved a massive 2.2 kilograms. It's only 1% of the bike, but we're gonna start looking at a cum cumulative, cumulative, cum cumulative weight loss. So 2.2 kilos, bosh, done. That's the starter. Right, I've removed the center stand. I'll live without it, which weighs at least four kilograms. I've removed the OE Rally bash plate and toolbox, which went with it. I've replaced that with a composite item from AMX. I thought I'd save a bit more weight, but not too bad. It's another one and a half kilograms. Now, here's the biggie. <coughs> Excuse me. Ordered this week, and I'm starting off with the, I'm going to pronounce it right, the Akrapovic stainless steel header. Now the standard exhaust system, downpipes and exhaust, weighs about 6.1 kilograms. It's a heavy beastie. The Akrapovic, not Akrapovic, I think it's Akrapovic, and I like saying crap, uh, even though it isn't, weighs 2.1 kilos. That's a four kilogram saving. Excited, I'm excited about that. Of course, I'm gonna then follow that up with a lovely new can to replace this heavy beast here. That should be at least another two or three kilograms. We'll call it two to start with. Um, that's a six kilogram saving just on the exhaust system by fitting a header and can. That's a bit of a good thing. Um, what else? I'm investigating the weight benefit of going tubeless, getting one of them tubeless kits or tubeless kits. Uh, any comments on that? are very welcome. Um, I can, I can, I, can I convert to remove the weighty heavy duty tubes that I've got in there? <coughs> Might save a kilogram. It's all adding up. I reckon they, will, they weigh at least a kilo, so it'd be interesting to see what the tubeless kit actually weighs. Uh, a mate of mine, Ian, who works at Coast Yamaha, south of Adelaide, he's provoked some thought too. Um, he doesn't even have crash bars on his T7. I said I was gonna come to these. Um, he rides hard all over South Australia. I reckon removing them would be another five kilos maybe, I don't know if I felt like taking that risk, but in the two years of ownership of this, I reckon this bike's been in landscape mode maybe half a dozen times and uh, it's the nature of off-road riding, isn't it? So until I learn to stop lying it down, I'll be uh, keeping them on the bike, I think. So let's summarize what we're talking about here. I'm, I'm gonna just discuss the other side to this as well because I expect there'll be riders out there that are happy just to be carrying all and sundry with them whilst they're in uh, whilst what I call it boy scout mode be prepared carrying everything they'll have either soft luggage or panniers they'll have extra lights on the bikes if they're riding at night every conceivable piece of kit to tackle a, a good, decent long adventure ride I suppose they've got to be prepared for whatever issues they encounter and happy to compromise that original feel of the bike for peace of mind I'm not um, if you're like me and you want to also keep that flamboyant weapon, the T7 as is, as, as Yamaha intended, be aware that if you add something, consider the fact you might need to also take something away or look at swapping components for lighter alternatives to compensate, such as the exhaust system or the, the lighter composite bash plate. Um, it's, it's a balance, but you've got to be aware if you want to keep that bike feeling as it was when you bought it. Um, you've got to compensate. So that's it for now. I'll see you again soon with an update on that full Akrapovic system. Uh, that'll no doubt look and sound awesome. I'm sure it will. Uh, and along with that six kilo saving in weight. Uh, something else I'm going to be reducing on another note is, uh, other than the bike's weight, is my time on social networks moving forward, other than right here on YouTube. So if you like what you watched 
or think it's useful info, I'd massively appreciate you sharing it on your pages or on your pages that you visit. Um, it's good info, I hope. It's useful. And I'll appreciate that a great deal. So please consider a subscribe, a like, definitely have a comment. I'm Neil. This is Rider Guider. Thanks for watching.